Welcome to a seminar talk from Maxim Jastemski. Jastemski. Um, it's on automotive Ethernet and its performance. And as the last one is here, we can start. Uh, good afternoon from my side. Uh, Professor Semgil, thank you very much for introduction. Uh, thanks for coming. I will give an uh, um, introduction to automotive Ethernet and its performance. Here on the title slide, you see a couple a uh, nice picture with a couple of applications which use or might use the automotive Ethernet. But let's start with the prerequisites. So what is actually uh, why it was invented or using right now? Basically, that's huge demands of the different uh, software and hardware applications for the bigger uh, uh, bandwidths, uh, thus uh, near doubling of amount of electronics. Uh, over the last decades, uh, that's uh, complexity as well as volume, the amount of electronics, uh, the uh, pre prevalent technologies which are used right now, that's CAN boost, for example, Lean, Most, and Flex Ray, uh, they cannot provide this bandwidth requirement, requirements, basically because they were not designed for that. And uh, uh, additionally, in the future, when the uh, driverless cars hit the roads, uh, uh, even more uh, uh, bandwidth is required. For example, the, for sensors like cameras, sliders, radars, and ultrasonic sensors. And uh, additional reason for that, many uh, cars, even right now, are equipped with 4G uh, modems, which provide uh, connection to three, uh, up to 300 or 400 megabits can, uh, speed. And this means that multi-gigabit uh, solutions in the automotive Ethernet are also inevitable. Uh, but let's take uh, uh, a little overview of the applications which, uh, and this, uh, which are using automotive Ethernet. That's uh, most of the applications that are right now that's advanced driver assistance systems. They use a lot of cameras. That's why require a lot of bandwidth. Uh, the applications in infotainment area, that's a special term which is very, uh, very much spread in the automotive area. That means information and entertainment applications like navigation, audio video content applications for the in dash and passengers display. And the last one onboard diagnostics and power tray communications. So automotive internet can enable faster firmware software updates as well as uh, uh, faster data flows within a vehicle. You might wonder why actually not taking the normal Ethernet? Uh, the quick answer for the whole slide, uh, which summarizes the whole slide, is just the uh, normal Ethernet was not designed for that. And uh, it might sound also a little funny. It's too heavy for automotive area. For example, the operating environment quark hash, uh, quark uh, harsh, uh, the minus 40, uh, 85 degrees of Celsius are requirements for operation, even up to 125 in the engine and powertrain area. So automotive internet has high requirements to resistance to electromagnetic interference. And uh, mechanical robustness is a must uh, for the cables uh, in a car or wiring harness. Additionally, uh, out of, uh, normal Ethernet provides uh, distance uh, up to 100 meters, which is not really necessary for a car because the maximum distance is just 15 uh, meters. So it makes uh, this cable really heavy for the automotive area. You still may wonder, is, is the weight really a problem? Yes, it is a problem. That's, for example, the slides, the wiring harness for a car. Uh, that's the third complex uh, component of a car, actually. And uh, for the end luxury uh, car, which has a lot of electronics and devices, the wiring harness can weigh up to 50 kilograms. And according to estimations, uh, automotive Ethernet help can help to reduce this weight up to 30, 30%. And 30% of 50 kilograms, uh, uh, this 15 kilograms, and now question to you, would you like to have 15 kil kilograms of cables or maybe additional fire extingu extinguisher? Of course, fire extinguisher. Uh, uh, what is uh, automotive Ethernet in a nutshell? That's basically the 
uh, the, the only uh, physical layer is changed. That pro uh, the physical layers consists of one unshielded single uh, single twisted pair cable, and it provides full duplex 100 megabits uh, communication link. All the other layers can basically stay the same as uh, in normal uh, Ethernet based communication. Uh, Let's take a quick overview of the automotive and standards. Everything started with broad reach standard that was a result of the work of many car producers and electronic producers in 2018. After that, IEEE organization also issued a couple of standards, uh, for example, in 2015 for uh, 100 megabit uh, connection with some two small additions for the test requirements. After that, in 2016, uh, one gigabit connection standard was issued. Uh, there is also work for the uh, standards for the plastic, uh, plastic optical fiber uh, usage, and also the development uh, in the development is next standard, which uh, make use of multi gigs automotive Ethernet connections. Uh, if we take a look even deeper, how actually data transmissions happen in, in the automotive uh, Ethernet uh, from the media independent interface to media dependent interface. So the data we need to transmit are divided in four bit chunks. After that, they also divide it again in three bit chunks and uh, they encode it with uh, two uh, ternary uh, pairs. Uh, with values minus, uh, minus minus one, zero, or one. And after that, these uh, pairs are transmitted with pulse amplitude modulations with three levels, three levels plus uh, one volt, minus one volt, and zero. And zero. Uh, as I said, the automotive internet provides full duplex connection that is realized with uh, hybrids nodes and together with echo, excel, uh, canceller uh, blocks, they, uh, remove the transmitted, its own transmitted sig, like when two um, uh, nodes are communicating, uh, these blocks removing uh, their own transmitted signals and uh, extract the signal from the link partner in order to do, in order to do that at the beginning, they uh, undergo, undergo some uh, uh, negotiation process where uh, the master node is settled and slave node is settled. And after that, they uh, trans uh, they communicate with uh, the same frequency and phase. Uh, but that's everything before was what concerned actually only physical uh, layer of the automotive Ethernet. What is actually automotive Ethernet? But on top of that, automotive industry also requires a set of uh, uh, a set of standards which uh, provide very precise and timing constraints for the application. For the applications. Uh, and because of that, a set of uh, standards, I would say a family of standards was uh, developed. That's AVB, TSN, audio video bridging, and time sensitive networking. Initially, that was developed with special AVB task group from 2005. Later, it was renamed to uh, Time sensitive network task group, which uh, encourage, uh, encourages uh, using these standards not only for the automotive area, but also for the industry areas for the control of robots, robots and so on. Uh, so this uh, family uh, includes a lot of sub standards. Uh, the main group is time synchronization, scheduling and traffic shaping, and also like some quality of service and uh, reservations in the pass and uh, fault tolerance. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, as I said, a lot of standards. We will go through uh, uh, some of them, for example, timing and synchronization. That's uh, one of the funda fundamental standards because it uh, provides timing to support low jitter media clocks and synchronization for the uh, communication of different streams. And on this is the basement for many other standards. Um, it was uh, done initially with cooperation with I, uh, IEEE 1580T working group, which is responsible for the uh, precision uh, time protocol. 
And uh, the basic unit of the, this uh, standard is time-aware bridges or end stations that any device which, which requires the uh, time, time and time synchronization. And main workflows uh, in this uh, standard is uh, this following, grant master selection, measuring of link delays uh, or end-to-end -end time synchronization across the LAN. We will go through all these workflows in next slides. In next slides. For example, the grant master selection. Uh, the, as grant master selection, you can imagine any node which is responsible for synchronizing the network, and he sends this node sends announces that uh, uh, I'm the best. Like that's meaning, so you should. Um, uh, synchronize uh, to my time step and uh, at the end slaves acknowledge the grant master uh, this is the best grant master and just follow it for example we can imagine one more additional uh, case when uh, additional grant master somehow appeared uh, and uh, after receiving the announce from the red uh, grant master it realizes I have the better priority and uh, he sends then uh, Additional announcements that uh, this node, uh, I'm the best, this, uh, you should be synchronized to me. And stations at the end realize, all other stations realize that Blue Grandmaster is superior and start to uh, have synchronization with it. Uh, as for example, this on, on this slide. Uh, after that, for example, that can happen that uh, Blue Grandmaster is uh, disappearing and uh, all uh, Grandmaster Cable Extension starts to send uh, announces again and eventually everybody is synchronized with Red Master. That's one of the cases with, which is quite possible in this uh, standard workflows. Uh, another one uh, workflow is link delay measurement. Uh, this is based on the exchanging of uh, exchanging of two nodes with some messages, which help to measure the uh, distance to one node and backwards. And after that, uh, uh, in this case, device uh, device one can uh, make an assumption how uh, how much how long is delay uh, between between in, in this link with an assumption that is uh, the link is symmetrical. Uh, and one more uh, workflow is end-to-end -end time synchronization across uh, the network. It, it is done, for example, in this way. The master, grant master, can, uh, can sync, sync uh, messages every sync interval. And after that, this follow-up message that sends also the precise timestamp of now, uh, the next device, which, for example, can be switch or some uh, other device, uh, knowing already the link delay, uh, resends this uh, message to the follow to the next one, uh, also providing the residence time in the uh, next following up message. The next device is behaving the same way, and later the slave device, the end device, can actually uh, together uh, together with time step of receiving the T2 prime prime message can actually uh, understand what was the uh, initial timestamp from the master. Yeah, uh, in the automotive area, uh, for example, uh, also uh, according to the previous uh, slide, uh, some uh, uh, parts of this process can be also uh, improved, for example, the link delay, as soon as the wiring harness is fixed, it's built, the uh, link delays can be predefined, the master can be also predefined, so it helps to improve the performance of the uh, AVBTSN uh, networks. There are uh, among the, uh, apart from uh, timing and synchronization protocols, there are a lot of other protocols, for example, the stream reservation protocol, that's a technique which uh, allows to uh, notify the devices uh, in the link about the required uh, stream and uh, uh, forwarding and queuing protocol, which is uh, responsible for the uh, 
passing this uh, stream uh, through the network and uh, one more additional uh, family of the protocols is AVB systems that basically provides the necessary uh, standards and rules protocols for the uh, audio video applications. Uh, if you take, for example, look in the common metrics of the testing of the uh, uh, Ethernet networks, that's the following parameters. The throughput, latency, jitter, and packet loss. But, uh, but automotive area actually requires additional, uh, have additional challenges uh, because of the real-time applications, which mostly uh, are used in the automotive area. That's um, timing and safe, safety critical systems and a synchronicity prioritization. So nobody wants that driver drive assistance breaks or turns left or turns right a little bit later than it's necessary. Uh, so I based I also present a couple of results of the testing of the AVB TSN uh, networks uh, from the researchers from Luxembourg. Uh, uh, they um, took the open AFNU, that's uh, open source implementation of AVB TSN. They set up uh, two uh, computers, APU 2C4, uh, with some connection where they tried to uh, test two scenarios, uh, verifying if AVB T T TSN can guarantee the two millisecond latency constraint for the high pr high highly prioritized uh, traffic. And that additional uh, experiment was uh, checking the delay variance for both Ethernet and uh, AVB networks and the different network traffic loads. And if you take a look at the uh, results, for example, here you can see the results of the first experiments. The blocks here represent uh, the first and the third quartiles of the data set. The line in the middle, like here it's see, to be better to see, here is not. Uh, the uh, median value of the data set. And here you can see that for the AVB networks, uh, the blue boxes, even with uh, these outliers values, it still can uh, provide the uh, delay less than two milliseconds, which is responsible, which is necessary for the traffic uh, class uh, of class A, highly prioritized traffic. And additional, uh, experiment that was fulfilled that's, uh, uh, this graph depicts the, uh, average of the delay variation of the AVB and Ethernet traffic. And as you could see, the AVB is quite more resilient to the, uh, traffic loads as, well, as well, uh, comparing to the Ethernet. Uh, to sum everything up, like uh, we went through the automotive Ethernet prerequisites and uh, the applications that are used in the automotive uh, area. Uh, introduction to automotive Ethernet physical layer was given as well as uh, its standards. Uh, the successful results for evaluation of automotive Ethernet performance were given in two scenarios and also some perspective of automotive Ethernet and car industry as well as uh, the a speed improvements in the future were given. That was it. Thank you very much for your attention.